In this event, Community Conversations, a Macro Perspective, you'll be hearing from Libby Boyce, Homeless Coordinator for Los Angeles County, October 10, 2014, at California State University, Los Angeles. The Community Conversations are presentations from community experts related to issues that impact us and our communities through a policy and practice lens. Okay. So I want to give you a little background on what's been happening in LA uh, for those of us who are in the homeless field um, and working on this on a day-to-day -day basis. What sort of, you know, where we've been. Um, and I'm not going to go before 2004, 2005. Um, you know, I don't know how much you know, but there was, um, you know, a deinstitutionalization of our mental health institutions. Um, and lots of things that sort of added to, uh, you know, the perfect storm in the early 2000s. Um, I actually, in 2004, I had been working with HIV and AIDS, but in 2004, I took a job, just another challenge, um, to go to the Department of Health Services and be their homeless coordinator. Um, and at that time, you know, people weren't really working together at all. And I just want to tell you that's changed very, very significantly. But um, there was a real focus at that time on Skid Row and what was going on at Skid Row um, and a lot of media attention and so on. Um, and at, at that time, um, the chief administrative officer of the county asked all of the departments, we get assignments that come down from the board and from, from our, our boss, the CAO, um, now he's the CEO, to look at all of our county discharge policies and how we were or were not, you know, responsive to, to homeless issues. So we talked for many months about, you know, what our policies were, we established better policies, and we essentially um, decided that we needed to tell the board that we needed some money to do something. Um, and so in 2006, the CAO, at that time was David uh, Jansen, led an effort to implement something called the Homeless Prevention Initiative. It was a $100 million initiative. 32 million of that was put out to bid to the city and the various cities, there's 88 cities in LA County, to the various cities for requests for proposals. So communities could say, you know, what, um, you know, what they wanted to do or needed to do to address homeless issues in their own communities. Um, 48 million went to our county departments for various different things. Some of the ones that Nick actually mentioned, the program I did, which was BEST and Access to Housing for Health, some of that money uh, went to the departments. We also did, in DHS, we did, and that's Department of Health Services, recuperative care, a bunch of other programs. And then there's 50 million of ongoing funding that's every year, half of which actually goes to the board um, offices and it's split by five so that they can do various different things within their own um, district on homeless issues. So in about 2007, Zevier Slosky, our supervisor, who's probably the most um, progressive on homeless issues, asked a whole bunch of, because we still weren't, you know, we were still in the paper, we were still not doing you know, anything right, and LA County was kind of the, the spectacle of the whole country because we had the biggest problem and we were were perceived as not not doing what we should be doing and the city and county didn't get along and you know there's all kinds of public um, but Zeb called a whole load of folks in from all around the country to basically tell us what to do and from that without going into too many details we decided to do what they had done in New York City common ground in New York City which was completely clean up Times Square um, and we decided to to basically survey everybody in the Skid Row area, wake them up at four or five in the morning, uh, do a series of questions for them and decide who is the sickest and take the top 50 and put them right into housing, which is called Housing First, which I'll, which I'll, I'll mention as well uh, in my slide. Put them right into housing and um, you know, no questions asked and wrap services around that. And what was different about this was that um, we were serving the most vulnerable, and I'm going to just be totally blunt. We had we had creamed prior to that. We had served the people that were easiest to serve. We had served the people who could wait in line, um, and you know, come back every year. Um, so the people who were the sickest, the most unable to help themselves, we couldn't help. So what we did with this was, okay, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to take the sickest, and we're going to show them. We're going to blast myths that say people don't want housing. 
and that people can't and won't take treatment when they come inside. Um, and so even though it was only 50, it did a lot politically, getting to my point. A lot of people will say, oh, it was only 50. It did a lot because it put us all on the right path and there was 24 partners, including the city and all the county departments and the city attorney and you know so many, so many partners. So pilots are very important because if you do it large scale and you don't get it right in that first year, it's done. But pilots, you can always say it's a demonstration, we're tweaking it, we're, we're fixing it as we're flying it. So um, that was a real, real turning point. And just uh, back to the housing first concept, we all started talking about that. What does that mean? That means prior, uh, you had to be clean and sober to get help. And the bottom line is common sense. Do you think if you're living out on the street <laughs> that you're gonna get clean and sober before you get housed? Just common sense. So the notion is that you provide housing first with no strings attached. You don't have to mandate services. You don't, they don't have to be clean and sober and you bring them inside and you wrap services around them. I like to say you wrap services around them without them knowing that the services are wrapped around them. Did this just go on? No. You wrap them without them knowing, meaning you know, you're not in their face, but you know, when they come through the lobby, you're like, hey, how you doing this morning? It's, a, it's, not, it's the opposite of the medical model. It's a very uh, flexible, whatever it takes approach. And we found, I think it's four years now, we still have a 76% retention mm. rate mm. on Project 50. And, and we've done many, many uh, uh, expansions of Project 50 because we had all those partners and we've really moved forward together over the years. That's what the last bullet here is. We've done a lot and it's been on permanent supportive housing, which up front, the solution to homelessness, housing with services. The volumes are different, meaning every single adult, every family, every youth, not need the same kind of housing or the same level of services so you have to be able to flex for their particular needs I'm gonna just get my walk Can I have my walk? Thank you. okay so how many have heard for, about um, home for good Okay, this was another turning point. It's funny, when I went over to the CEO in 2010, um, the first thing I did was go to Washington in July 2010, because I started in July 2010, literally packed my bags and went to Washington, and a whole load of us uh, who worked here in LA, the city and uh, the head of LASA and a lot of different organizations and homelessness went to meet with the big people in, in the federal government, and kind of saying, no, we're really doing something good, because the word was that LA was just a mess. Um, and from that, when we came back, we all just realized, okay, we gotta do something. And the United Way um, led an effort called, it is leading an effort called Home for Good, which really uh, brings the private sector to the table. So essentially what they did was instead of you know, Department of Health Services is doing something over here, and mental health is doing something over here, and this one's doing, and then the foundations are doing whatever, like duplicating what we're doing. We all actually all sat at the same table and started talking about how we can maximize what each other do and leverage our resources. So this is an effort that's led by the United Way, and it really quantified the problem in a different way in terms of really thinking about, and, and really it's focused on chronic homeless. Um, so those who have been homeless the longest and have the most episodes and are the most sick. Um, and so quantifying the problem in terms of, if we know we have these many you know, chronic homeless, this is how many units and this is how much service we would need. Um, and the reason they could do that, public is a little, the public sector is a little bit, you know, um, challenge in terms of requirements and what we can and can't do and the politics and all of that. Well, the private sector can do whatever. And so we just kind of sit at the table and allow them to drive the effort that we couldn't necessarily drive ourselves. And then they go to the big political people and they say, you know, hey, you should do this. And you know, all of us that are working there are like, yeah, but we couldn't say it. That's kind of a long story, but that is the reality of politics. Um, and it brought the business community and philanthropy in, in, in a big way. 
Um, and then their HUD, our Housing and Urban Development, our federal, you know, the, the federal uh, agency that provides a lot of our funding for homelessness, they started telling us, hey, we're not going to pay for case management and, you know, continue just shelter and transitional housing. We want to focus on permanent solutions, permanent housing, and we want you to figure out how your mainstream systems, and what I mean by that is our health, our mental health, our welfare department, can play a role in, in you know, ending homelessness. And essentially, I don't mean necessarily more money, which more money helps, definitely. But looking at our existing things and saying, you know, our existing programs and our existing funding and saying, you know, how can we rework this to actually, you know, um, promote and implement more permanent supportive housing? And um, so, you know, that was very helpful having their directive. And basically, when there's a directive from HUD, you're not going to get money from them if you don't start kind of moving in that direction. Um, and they also put a real strong emphasis on coordinated assessment, which means that, you know, instead of everybody doing their own assessment, that there be some, uni you know, universal way of doing that and that we can all kind of use each other's assessments. Um, and that helps us collect data, more, much more compelling data. And targeted interventions, which sort of gets to what I said before, which is not every family, single adult, or youth needs the same kind of housing and services. So how do we figure out who is it that needs the most resources? Is it the people that can help themselves? Or is it the people that can't help themselves? And the people that can help themselves doesn't mean they don't need help, but they may need less help. So they really, and, and, and I'm so glad that they pushed this because it really helped us, you know, push our agenda farther, which is, you know, we need to be really focused on those people, but for this help, we'll not ever get off the streets. So um, the other thing was, um, and just going back to Home for Good, they had a funders collaborative where we got together every month and they provided lunch and it was really um, a, a, a nice meeting that we had where all the city and county and other <coughs> city partners sat and really thought through the kinds of partnerships, the kinds of things we could be doing and put our money on the table basically in a pot and put out requests for proposals for the community to get a little private, a little public dollars together. So that was going on at the same time. So there's been an awful lot of that partnering going on. Um, and, uh, and quite frankly, a lot of the politicians at the top will tell you the city and county don't get along. It's not true. Those of us that work in it, we are BFFs. I mean, we work, to, I mean, you know, we're together all the time. We, we roll our sleeves up. We're like, what can we do? How can we approach this? What can we do? How can I be more creative with our money over here? And how can I go back to my board and talk them into this? And they're doing the same thing. So it's really that the, 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 um, kind of the executive management that are really making things happen. Um, and then coordinated entry, that's a really big push right now for um, HUD, which is instead of having, and, and I should mention, we are the biggest jurisdiction, and we can actually say that LA County is a little different because we have so many different communities, rural, urban, you name it, and nobody else is like us. So, so you know, we can't use it as an excuse, but it's a reality. So coordinated entry is, you know, um, how do we how do we have homeless assessed and directed into some you know prioritization for accessing housing? So through the Home for Good, we have funded eight different coordinated entry providers who are trying to um, basically systematically put together an inventory of housing and match and prioritize all of the homeless that are being assessed in their communities for that housing. So HUD has really been pushing that and we have been um, working on that extremely hard. Um, and then scaling up. How are we scaling up so that we can take this to a whole different level? We've mm -hmm. built the infrastructures now. We know how to do this. We know the solution. So what do we do to actually scale up? And that's kind of where we're at now. Um, and then just FYI, the federal goals are to end homelessness for chronically homeless and vets by 2016. 
and families and youth by 2020. I feel like this is less of a dialogue, though. <laughs> is that okay? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I mean, if, if folks have questions, please, you know, if you want to interject with a question, this is really good. So the, the efforts you're talking about are really focused on a very small number or percentage of the homeless population, correct? Well, when I talk about scaling up, that's what we're, we are building the infrastructures to then scale up, meaning no, no, we're, we're, we're building systems so that we can serve many, many homeless. So it will not be the chronically, chronically homeless that you'd be scaling up to? Be all so Home for Good is focused on the chronically homeless. Um, there is another methodology, which is called rapid rehab.